Yesterday, Ashes of Creation took us through 30 minutes of footage of the wreckage of Carfin while diving into the story arc system within the game and how it will affect the world, the players, and make each server truly unique. The stream starts out with creative director Steven Shreve having one of the developers in the party trigger the story arc called the Blood Still Do with his magical dev powers. This type of event will normally happen in the live game due to certain progression within the surrounding nodes of the region you are in, and when it triggers, it'll come with a whole package of NPCs, quests, monsters, and rare resources that will almost take over that specific point of interest in a sense until the players go in and, in the case of Carfin, cleanse the curse. Each story arc is not procedurally generated, each one is handwritten and crafted by the developers, and they are built in a way to replace the quest hubs that you are used to in other MMORPGs. Since the world of Vera is ever-changing, quest hubs don't really make a lot of sense in the way that they do with most monsters modern MMORPGs, and they needed something that could be on par with the node system, and that's how we got the story arc system. The game itself will look at what players are doing and respond to them by giving them these new arc. It's not catered towards one player's actions, but the actions of the entirety of the players on that server. When the blood still do is triggered, it kicks off with the ground shaking and a large explosion at the top of the Tower of Carfin. All of a sudden, the zone becomes filled with fog, the entire ambience of the area changes, and new and NPCs spawn in replacing those that were there before, along with NPCs that give quests and rare resources that players will want to take advantage of picking up. But the coolest change that they showed within this had to be this bridge that started to move into place giving players access to an area that was not available before the story arc started, and with that bridge came a small sort of jumping puzzle where you had to jump across the gaps to make your way across into the next part of the zone. There were, of course, other ways into that area that the bridge gave access to, but those ways were much more dangerous to cross. With the spawn tables, in the normal non-corrupted state of the wreckage of Carfin, it is filled with more arcane constructs like we've seen in the past with animated armors and things like that. But while this area is in its corrupted state, we will see these enemies turn into those using blood magic, which Steven fights his way through. We also get a look at Steven's quest log showcasing some of the other story arcs going on in the world. World, one called the Priest and the Piper, which has three quests within it, Tale of a Totem, which has the player investigating a mysterious goblin totem, Tale of Tallfoot, which has the player investigating an old book they found, and the Whistling Key, which has you trying to find the chest that can be unlocked by a key you just found. There were two more story arcs in there as well, but we didn't get to see the details on the quest within these, and Steven was too distracted by the moving bridge to pick up the Blood Still Do quest from the NPC that spawned. One of the most interesting Interesting things behind this though is each story arc has a certain amount of time for it to be completed by the player before it ends. These arcs give a whole bunch of objectives to the players, some being optional, and based on what players are choosing to complete will lead to the next phase of the arc and help the server choose what happens next. Steven later gave an example within Carfin, and depending on how the arc progresses, you'll either be fighting a boss on the top of the Tower of Carfin or one at the bottom of the tower to end the arc. These story arcs can be repeated so if you finish it and then want to jump back in with friends again who are now starting it for the first time, you can do that. And some of these story arcs will pop up again down the road depending on the server progression in case you missed it originally, while the more narrative-led ones could be a one-off directing the future of the server and embedding it into your server's lore. The stairs leading up to the dungeon of Carfin have statues of the deans of Carfin's past, starting with the founder of Carfin, an elf by the name of Ten Felleris Wren, whom was the one who decided to help teach humans magic and build up Carfin University. The area itself is very lore rich with the statues and murals on the side telling parts of the story and it appears to be a very interesting area that you may want to spend some time just exploring. It wouldn't be new gameplay though without a sandal somewhere in it which we got on this giant statue over by the entrance and it looks kind of gross. And once Steven enters the tower they clear out some mobs and the last mob they killed is called a hoarder which resembles a treasure chest, also very similar to Mimic's. This guy was dormant and looked just like a chest until Steven approached it, and then when they fought it, it exploded on his death. Inside the tower, we can also see two staircases going up on either side that Steven did not set out to explore, as he stated the area was a work in progress. He did state that Carfin is the biggest dungeon within the Riverland. It is going to be a very large dungeon that players are going to spend a lot of time in when they're in the Riverlands 
throw in Alpha 2. Overall, I think this was a great showcase giving us a tease of the area, along with talking about how exactly these narrative events will work in the game. Obviously, this is still a work in progress, which was very visible in the stream as there seemed to be some big FPS drops at times, and for some reason, Steven's character looked really blurry to me the entire time. I'm not sure if I'm going crazy and that was just me or other people noticed it too. I haven't really noticed it this bad in past streams, so I don't know what's going on there, but I'm sure it'll be something that gets addressed as we continue towards Alpha 2. What are your thoughts on the Tower of Carfin area and the narrative system that we learned about in this stream? Drop a comment down below and if you're new to Ashes and you've yet to create an account, feel free to use my referral link in the description below where you can jump in on the forums, buy some cosmetics, or just hang out until you can finally step foot into the world of Vera. Otherwise, be sure to click that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, turn on the bell for notifications, and stay tuned for a lot more to come.